move over PSVR because I've got a new love. That's right, I somehow managed to get my slightly greedy hands on an Oculus Quest. Having just released the other week, the Quest is arguably more of a game changer for virtual reality than we've seen for a while now. Being a completely wireless VR headset, not needing external power via a PC or games console, and instead somehow managing to perform entirely from a slightly old smartphone processor, this is basically the Nintendo Switch of the VR world. I've only had mine for a few days now, but I felt it was time to share my experiences with you guys, and it's safe to say that I think it's worth every penny. And I haven't even bought a single game for it yet. <laughs> nope. I've been obsessing over what you can get for entirely no money at all. Yes, I'm talking about free. That being a fairly large selection of games and apps like Rec Room, albeit with very few game modes at the moment, VR Chat, don't, don't be a child molester, and a fair few demos. As well as the games that you are freely allowed to sideload to it as well, like Minecraft VR, and the alpha for the Quest version of online FPS, Pavlov. His arm. Oh, they're not gonna be able to do You do it, you don't go! You don't go! You don't go! You don't go! Oh my god! This stupid! Oh. Yes, there are games on the Oculus Store that do have me very much intrigued to buy them, like Beat Saber and Vader Immortal, but there's literally no rush for me. Rec Room, for one, has always been one of my favourite VR titles, having played many hours of it on the PSVR, so I'm more than happy to see it here on the Quest. It's a fully free title that acts as a social place to play an absolute ton of well-made game modes. Yo, so much beer! From paintball to charades, to engaging on quests, and even a fun battle royale mode as well. Rec Room just has enough to keep anyone busy in my opinion. Although, the Quest version does only have paintball and charades from that selection for now, that is. Yeah, Rec Room surely is a game that never disappoints. You're on your period. VR Chat is the other free game that most users will probably download to begin with, and I'd always been intrigued by the game, even though I know it isn't for me. No, no, my banana! You back your banana! I mean, I'm not quite sure what you do in it other than talk to people. I mean, I guess that is the name of the game quite literally. However, I'm the type of guy that always has their mic on mute and never says a word. I can barely manage social interactions in real life, never mind over the internet as well. I think people do find it a bit weird that I don't talk back to them. But I thought, why not give it a go anyway? And I thought, I'll just be a dog. <laughs> yeah, uh, Scooby-Doo, to be more precise. Who's the good boy? Nah, that honestly made me so happy. I now know how dogs feel. But then, oh boy. But then we have Pavlov. Another title that I'd always been intrigued to try out, being a big fan of FPS games in general, and this one isn't on the Oculus Store yet. It's still an alpha game, so you do have to do some PC magic and sideload the game to the quest. There are plenty of videos online of how to do that, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, although it did take me like two hours to do, but anyway. The point is, I literally spent the entirety of yesterday and this afternoon in this one game. And there's only two maps online as well, at least for now, with it being an alpha and everything. Pavlov at the moment has your typical gun game and search and destroy, but the enticing thing of this game is the level of immersion that comes thanks to the fun VR aspect. Like, for example, think your mouse reflexes are fast? Well, try actually aiming with your real hands and eyes. You, you need to reload? Then you better know how to manage loading a new round of LMG ammunition, otherwise you're going to get stuck time and time again. 
You wanna know how to reload it, dude? Come on, you gotta be smarter than Look, that. I'm trying to get the fucking belt into it, right? Like, like... Lift yeah. up the gun! Yeah. Lift up the gun! You're retired. Look, 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 mother... How about thinking a guy is one way, only to hear them creepily whisper in your ear, Shh. <laughs> Now that's what VR excels at in my opinion, and I'm so glad that the quest is supporting Pavlov to say the least. I mean, despite playing the same map and mode over and over again, it literally manages to get you into one of those just one more game moods and I couldn't be happier. I did also mention that it can play Minecraft VR, and again, that is one that you need to sideload, as with Pavlov, however, it isn't natively supported for the quest, instead it's just a part of the Gear VR version, meaning that you do still need to use a Bluetooth controller, but it's still in 3D and virtual reality, so yeah. I haven't actually tried this one yet though, so I don't know. Now I'm not new to VR, far from it in fact. I mean, I've had a PSVR since launch day, and I've loved every minute I had with that. However, I did always have issues with it, and they are issues that this quest has managed to fix. With PSVR, the biggest immersion destroyer was always having that hefty cord that you had to throw over your shoulder. Like for example, you'd be in a game like Super Hot VR, Showing those red guys who's boss just for your agility and speed to break entirely because you got too worried that you're going to break the cord hooking you into the virtual world in the first place. And speaking of breaking the cord, I have actually had that break in the past and that was something that cost a few hundred to fix as well. So yeah, so that's a problem that's entirely gone with the quest. I've seriously never felt this free and immersed in VR before. It took me back to those first few days in PSVR when you'd go to put something on a table that wasn't actually there. The quality of PSVR was never something that really ruined the experience entirely for me, but I did get slightly upset whenever I'd noticed just how pixelated and blurry everything was. Again, it's almost entirely gone here with the quest. Since the headset does inside out tracking, hence not requiring external cameras like the PSVR, I am finally free to turn around in game and continue playing as if nothing happened. Yes, this means no more turn around idiot messages. Yeah, I do end up facing the fridge a lot though. However, there are still tracking issues whenever bringing the controllers too close to the headset cameras or exiting their field of view, but it's still a 10 times better experience than wondering if you're still even in the PSVR cameras framing or not. It also feels a lot more one to one with my movements, which is always a plus. Of course though, like others have mentioned, the quest isn't perfect. It still has its fair share of issues, like the headset being too front heavy sometimes, only having a 2-3 to three hour battery life before needing to be charged, but then again you can also charge it and play at the same time, so you know. Having pricey prices for a lot of their games, and obviously not being able to support much more demanding titles like Fallout or Skyrim. But you've got to understand that this is an entirely wire-free, except when needing to charge that is, everything done internally VR headset. Honestly, I'm as immersed as I would be with higher levels of detail and graphics, but with the added bonus of no wires, and I honestly love it. Yeah, I'm sorry PSVR, I guess we can still be friends?